Lando Norris is the last driver many Formula 1 fans would associate with unsportsmanlike behaviour, but that's what cost him and McLaren dearly in the Canadian Grand Prix. Norris lost the points finish in Montreal as the FIA stewards invoked a rarely used rule to punish him for something F1 drivers and teams have been doing for years. Confused? Well, Norris was too, and his McLaren team was annoyed, especially as it felt rival Alpine got away with a more serious offence. Norris was hit with a 5 second penalty in Canada that dropped him from 9th to 13th after the chequered flag. The stewards penalised Norris for slowing to allow a gap to form between himself and teammate Oscar Piastri behind the safety car so that they could pit on the same lap. The safety car was deployed after George Russell littered the track with debris, hitting the wall, and the race was neutralised as Piastri and Norris were in close proximity around the hairpin before the long back straight. Norris, who was around 3 seconds behind Piastri at this time, was told to pit and that he was the second car, which was obviously a signal to leave enough space between the cars so that Piastri could be serviced in the pit lane and Norris could slot straight in without having to wait in the box and be jumped by cars behind him. This tactic is hardly uncommon when teams attempt to pull off a double stack, which is pit stops for both cars in quick succession. The stewards didn't look favourably on Norris doing it in Canada. They noticed a significant difference in speed between Norris and Piastri between the hairpin and the final corner of approximately 50 kilometres an hour. This more than doubled the gap to at least 7 seconds and more importantly, it seems to have delayed the drivers behind Norris, Charles Leclerc and Alex Albon at the same time. And the judgement clearly implies that by costing them time by holding them up to maintain position, Norris unfairly influenced their races. Previously, teams have freely acknowledged the importance of making a gap before a double stack and tend to do it without fear of punishment, even though it has occasionally resulted in penalties in the past. What made matters particularly confusing was that the stewards decided, unusually, that what Norris did constituted a breach of the FIA's International Sporting Code. They specifically cited the article referring to any infringement of the principles of fairness in competition, behaviour in an unsportsmanlike manner or attempt to influence the results of a competition in a way that's contrary to sporting ethics. So not only was it somewhat strange to see a pretty routine tactic be punished, it was punished via an obscure rule. There's probably just a bit of rebranding here as what is normally dealt with as driving too slowly as a sporting regulation offence has now been judged via an ISC rule governing sporting behaviour. In the past, the rare occasion slowing down too much under the safety car to create a gap has been investigated, let alone punished, it's been on the grounds of an alleged sporting rules breach. This has referred to the regulation governing driving unnecessarily slowly, erratically or in a manner that could be deemed dangerous to other drivers or any other person at a time while the safety car is deployed. In fact, Norris was involved in a similar incident in 2020 at the Italian Grand Prix where he was investigated using exactly that part of the sporting regulations. He was cleared of any wrongdoing, but there was a suggestion at the time, at the following race, that the FIA had subsequently decided it needed to be clamped down on in the future. Despite this, it continued to be a known practice in Formula 1. A recent example can even be found this year at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, where Lance Stroll backed off behind teammate Fernando Alonso so much that George Russell attempted to overtake him in the pit lane entry, although Stroll only seemed to create an extra couple of seconds gap and impeded Russell much less, so it could be deemed a lesser offence than what Norris did in Canada. Norris's penalty and the rule used to implement it may hint at there being a change in how this action will now be viewed and dealt with, or that there was just something specific about this incident that made it unsporting when other cases are not. We think it's a bit of both, potentially as a consequence of the rotating cast of stewards. The stewards judged that Norris slowed down significantly, and the implication is a little bit of give and take is fine, but he crossed the line in this case by impeding other drivers, whereas another set of stewards might think that what Norris did was okay, because it's a subjective matter. There may also be differences in the stewards' command of the different regulations. One group may think a different part of the rulebook is the most appropriate to use as the reference, hence invoking the ISC on this occasion. But it is slightly strange that they went in this direction when the sporting regulation has been so commonly used in the past. And it would make sense for this to be clarified for the future, because the reaction to the penalty makes it clear that many fans were absolutely baffled to see the phrase unsportsmanlike behaviour randomly being cited. And given competitors in any sport are pushing the limits of what's unsporting every time they are in action, if we're going to start punishing that as an offence, the stewards could be very busy from now on. Norris didn't actually know what he'd been penalised for until after the race, and he wasn't particularly impressed. 
He said it didn't make any sense, especially as he claimed he wasn't deliberately backing off that much, suggesting that if this merited a penalty, he should have got several over the last few years and others should get one as well. McLaren was equally baffled by the penalty after the race and team boss Andrea Stella did wonder if the stewards were trying to set a new precedent after all. As far as he was aware after the race, this hasn't been actively discussed and we understand the FIA views this as a consistent application of the existing understanding of going too slowly behind the safety car, even though a different rule was used to enforce it. Stella suggested that if a new precedent is to be set, it is within the FIA's and the stewards remit, but it should be established properly. That's what might happen if the matter gets reviewed by the Sporting Advisory Committee, the body of FIA and team representatives that meet to discuss the application of the sporting rules and this has been suggested by McLaren. Another item that is set to be raised by McLaren in that committee is cars being allowed to continue in a potentially unsafe condition. At the end of the Canadian race, separate to Norris's penalty, he and McLaren were keen to flag the wobbling rear wing on Esteban Ocon's Alpine ahead of him on track. Norris made it very clear over the radio he felt it was dangerous and could break, and McLaren raised the matter with race control. But as was established last year, after some contentious incidents involving cars with flailing parts and intervention from the race director, the duty of care is on the teams and it's down to them to decide whether they should bring their own cars in. This is something McLaren has been uncomfortable with since the end of last year, and the argument is that teams are going to be more inclined to risk safety in pursuit of a better result. Stella said Ocon's rear wing was an extreme example, but that each team will view the responsibility for safety in their own way, the implication being that Alpine should have taken action. Doubtless McLaren would have felt differently if one of its cars was being scrutinised, but that probably goes for Norris's penalty as well. If a rival pulled that tactic, maybe McLaren would have been calling for punishment instead of questioning whether it was fair.